Remember when we talked about hashtags and we sort of read between the lines that they're probably not for getting direct reach anymore. More like to train their content suggestion algorithms. So I thought to myself, why would they say that? You know, everything has to have a reason. It's cause they're training their recommendation algorithm. They're going away from hashtags being just a traffic source, which used to be the case, to actually use the information that hashtags give them to recommend you on other places like the explore page. Well, dominators, turns out I was right because yesterday our old friend Adam Maziri, the head of Instagram, when being asked about hashtag reach, said the following. Not really. They do help us to understand what a post is about, which means it might be more likely to show up in a place like a hashtag page, for instance. But in general, no, I wouldn't try to think of hashtags as a way to get more distribution. They help Instagram understand what a post is about so that they can then recommend this content accordingly. He said, and I just have to repeat it again to make you really understand, because that's sort of a big thing. He said, I wouldn't think of hashtags as a way of getting distribution. Well, that's it then, right? Hashtags are dead. Or are they? Should you continue to use hashtags after this banger statement or not? The answer is actually pretty simple, my friends. <laughs> yes, you should. Because it's a multi-layered question right now. Let me explain. In the past few months, people have messaged me saying, well, Dominic, what's wrong with my hashtags? They don't work anymore. And you know, usually when I take a look at their stats, a lot of the times their hashtag reach was pretty much dead. Yeah, I have to give them that. However, their explore reach had gone up and their home reach, but people usually don't look, take a look at that. <laughs> Why? Obviously because of this, what he just said. Because you know now the explore page can be a lot more nuanced when recommending content. Because they actually use the information gotten from the hashtags, combine it with the image recognition to train their algorithm even more. So before I tell you the latest hashtag hacks, here's how I think your hashtag strategy should look like. First of all, the more descriptive, the better. Usually I say don't create content for algorithms, create for people. But in that case, it's almost the other way around. When thinking about what hashtags to use, sort of always have the algorithm in your mind and always think about how would the Instagram algorithm categorize that post and how could I help the algorithm understand that post a little bit more deeper in a sense of who is this post actually for. Ideally, you have one to two general descriptive hashtags, meaning you know what's actually in the post. We're gonna talk about how to actually do that in a second. And then one to two or three or four, you know, it's not really that important how many you have, but yeah, let's just say uh, three to four hashtags that describe this whole thing a little bit better to make it clearer for the image recognition system because they sort of have some issues sometimes. Let me show you some examples. If you go on Instagram with your browser and you open a post, there's one split second where you can actually see a tiny glimpse into the image recognition AI. I'm pretty sure behind the scenes, they have a ton more data and they know a lot more. However, it's still very interesting to see and you can especially see why you need certain hashtags to describe this whole thing a little better. Example number one, it's a, actually a very text focused carousel post. And I did a screen recording actually to figure this out. You used to be able to go inspect element, stuff like this. Don't want to bother you too much. It's easier to do a screen recording. Anyway, in the first split second before opening this, you can see some information there in this uh, you know, alt text or whatever you might want to call it. Tagging Canva and Gents. So first of all, you see tags are apparently important for linking within and stuff like this. So if you always tag a bunch of accounts, this will also bring up the spam detection, especially if you, you know, spam tag people what i see a lot of people do just tack all of these feature accounts but you know that's for another video and here's where it gets interesting it says maybe an image of one or more people bared and text but if you take a look what they say right there first of all is it sort of shows me which hashtags might perform better overall plus which has you know which hashtag you should potentially use to give it a little bit more context first word they say maybe an image of one or more people right people you know they recognize it's somebody so maybe it's somebody special let's say this is a post about will smith you know and will smith is in there you might want to put that in the hashtags might be a person of one people who is it actually they take a look at the hashtags well hashtag Will Smith, because then they know who it actually is, and then they can suggest the post to you know Will Smith fans across the platform. Also, very interestingly, they recognize Beard, you know, as a keyword, if you will. So if the content was focused on uh, you know Beard stuff, grooming or anything like that, put in a few hashtags about Beards. 
you know? If not, don't do it, since you're just gonna confuse the algorithm, the content recognition, the content suggestion algorithms. This is why right now, unfortunately, random hashtags don't do anything anymore. Back in the days, we actually did grow like crazy with certain hashtags like hashtag Will Smith, <laughs> actually hashtag Will Smith and hashtag vegan. Cause they were highly searched tags that people searched and gave you a ton of traffic, no matter what was inside the picture. Cause the system wasn't a thing. Another interesting thing, a very small thing, but very important nonetheless. If we take a look at here, down there, he uh, has his own uh, account name in there saying, gent, I can't pronounce whatever that means, a uh, graphic design IG growth, but they recognize the text in there and they say rap C D E G I G growth. But down there you see it's actually graphic design. And for some reason, the software has some issues. It's not bad right now in the sense, but let's just say it would recognize the word rape. You know, or another word that's very bad, right? Or we've talked about this before. If in the background you have some poster that says something bad or something that the algorithm even misrecognizes certain words, as you can see right here, could be really bad for you, could give you lots of flags uh, for the long term. And suddenly you see your reach going down like crazy and you have no idea what you did. You did nothing wrong. But in fact, it's just an, an error with an Instagram. Example number two, as you can see right there, on the explore page is this post. And if we rewind the clock a little bit, we can see for a split second again, not a lot of information is in there in the first place. Might wanna add an alt text or uh, you know be a little bit more descriptive with your caption, because that's another thing they take a look at. Don't wanna confuse you right now. But they say, maybe an image of two people outdoors in text that says LR. First of all, it's always very interesting to see which sort of keywords they detect. In this case, they detect outdoors just based from that, <laughs> very interesting. So yes, if your audience consists of outdoor lovers, for example, or if you've identified an overlap uh, of your audience with outdoor lovers or anything of that sort, use outdoor focused hashtags, obviously. Describe it a little better so the algorithm knows, well, this is outdoors, uh, but there's sub genres of outdoor lovers. I actually have no idea about the outdoor lover niche, but I'm sure there are some trends within that niche that you could use in the hashtags to train the algorithm. Next thing being, and this is interesting, they say there's a text that says LR for Lightroom, right? But they don't really know it's Lightroom. Now I'm sure they sort of know that it means Lightroom, but they can't be 100% sure. And you wanna make it as easy as possible for the algorithm to recognize what's going on. So by putting in hashtag Lightroom and hashtag Lightroom tutorials, for example, the algorithm immediately knows that this is a Lightroom tutorial. And then it can recommend this to people who have previously shown interest in Lightroom tutorials and content like that. But I still get 5,000 hashtag reach every time I post. Stop saying post. Dominic. To which I have to say, yeah, it still is possible to get reach from hashtags. But that's not only because of the hashtag, but because your content is a, you know, being recognized as highly fitting to that hashtag, you know, like we just talked about. And B, and that's the other part of this whole hashtag strategy, is a hashtag that has a high volume of people searching for it and going through so it. So at the end of the day, yes, this whole thing, the whole hashtag strategy is somewhat of a mix between finding higher traffic hashtags that do fit within your post and descriptive hashtags that make the algorithms understand more of what your post is about. Now, a good tool to actually find highly performing hashtags is Hashtastic. They have a bunch of metrics you can really go deep into, you know, analyze similar accounts to spot some trends, stuff like this. I have a free version down below uh, in my description. With that being said though, don't stress too much about hashtag reach as if done correctly, you'll get more reach across the platform, not directly coming from the hashtag. Now, if you still think you might be shadow banned or you've experienced a deeper reach drop lately, you still might have to fix a few things in order to, for the algorithm to recommend your content again. We talk about what exactly to do in this video right here. And if you wanna get even deeper into the whole Instagram algorithm to grow your content, strategies that nobody really talks about on the open internet, make sure you get on the waiting list for the IG Black File 3.0, which is gonna launch pretty soon.